what God is doing in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to be finishing up tonight. We have been talking about separated for the move or separation for the move. Somebody shout and say separation. Uh, somebody shout and say separation for the move. Tell your neighbor tonight and say neighbor, I've been separated for the move. Hallelujah. It is important, child of God, that you must understand as we recap tonight that you need, before you make a move, you must make sure that you have been separated for that move. Hallelujah. It is important, children of God, that as we make a move that which, uh, where, where God wants to take us, that our move is not emotionally based, but our move must be separated. And we talked last week about the benefits of being separated by God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 13, and we start from verse number 1 up to verse number 3. We will also jump uh, to Acts chapter number 13, verse number 45, up to verse number 46 as we continue tonight in the name of the Lord. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. If you have found it, shout amen. Acts, Acts chapter number 13, New King James Version. We stand together for the reading of the word. Acts chapter number 13, uh, we read from verse number one. Uh, the Bible reads as follows in the New King James uh, Version. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Minan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, verse 2, and they ministered to the Lord. Somebody say, they ministered to the Lord. Oh, come on, let's speak together and say, they ministered to the Lord. And fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul, for the work which, to which I have called them. Verse 3. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Ex, uh, let's jump to verse 45 and verse 46. I think that's where we're going to dwell uh, tonight. Verse 45 and verse 46. The Bible says, But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. I want you to underline that word. They were filled with envy. And contradicting and blaspheming, they opposed the things spoken by Paul. Verse 46, Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it, and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life. Behold, we turn to the Gentiles. Spirit of a living God, we ask for your anointing tonight, O oh God. We pray, Father, in the name of the Lord, for revelation tonight. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that, O oh God, you go ahead, Almighty God, of your word, that you watch each and every word that proceeds, that, Almighty God, it fulfills that which, Almighty God, you have purpose for tonight. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that, O oh God, minister to our lives, minister to our destinations, in the mighty name of Jesus, minister to our intellect, O oh God, minister to our spirits, minister to our hearts, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that each one of us may be able to rise and make a move, in the name of the Lord, anoint my lips of clay, speak through my mouth, and risen through my mind, in Jesus' mighty and precious name, and let the church shout and say, Amen. Amen. Let the church shout and say, Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We can take our seats in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, well, last week we spoke about, uh, uh, um, um, number one and very important, uh, that it is important that you must be found in a local church. We find it right there in verse number one, uh, where we have read tonight, uh, in chapter 13, the Bible says, now in the church of Antioch, in the church of Antioch, the Bible says, there were certain prophets and teachers, and the Bible begins to name the prophets and teachers that were in the church, but in, in, amidst the prophets and the teachers, the Bible shows us that right there, there was, there was Paul and Barnabas, they were found in the church, shake your neighbor and say, they were found in the church. Come and tell your neighbors and neighbors that were found in the church. Therefore, what does this tell us as we spoke last week? That it is important that you must be planted within a church. It is important that you must be grounded within a church. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says Paul and Barnabas, they were found in the church. And verse number two shows us right there. The Bible says number two, they ministered to the Lord. Hallelujah. They, they, they were not only just sitting in the church. They were not only found in the church. But the Bible says they ministered to the Lord. Number three, the Bible says they also fasted. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Therefore, it is important, child of God, that you must take cognizance of these three principles. Number one, that you must be found in the church. Number two, that don't just be found in the church. You must make a conscious decision that I want to minister to the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to submit to somebody tonight, right on that point, that it is impossible for you to minister to the Lord unless you surrender yourself to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. You cannot minister your, your, yourself to the Lord. You cannot minister to the Lord unless you surrender yourself to the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, you need to make that decision as well, child of God, that my life must be a life that is surrendered to God. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, your life must be surrendered to God. I come and tell your neighbors and neighbor, your life must be surrendered to God. Listen to me, child of God. When your life is surrendered to God, that is when, when trouble comes, when trials begin to come, when the enemy begins to attack you, you do not fight because your life is surrendered. Am I talking sense tonight? Am I talking sense tonight? When your life is surrendered to the Lord, you are not worried because you are surrendered. You must understand, child of God, that the position of surrendering is the position of submission. Amen, somebody? Somebody shall say submission. You do not surrender and be above that which you surrender to. You do not surrender and you begin to lead that which you have surrendered to. You do not surrender and begin to be disobedient to that which you have surrendered to. When you have surrendered your life to the Lord, you say, Lord, wherever you lead, I will follow. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Wherever you're going to take my life, that's where I'm going to go. I'm not going to argue with you. My job is to follow. Not because I am not intellectual capacitated, but because I have made a decision to be surrendered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why, child of God, even in this local church, you cannot serve in the church unless your life has been surrendered. Hallelujah. Therefore, child of God, you can still be in the church. You can still pray, but yet your life is not surrendered to God. Yet your life is not surrendered to God. Hallelujah. Therefore, it is important if you want to move with God, if you want God to move in you, if you want God to work side by side with you, your life must be surrendered. Therefore, the moment you surrender your life, everything around you becomes subject to the move of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell the young people, I've got nothing against dating. But when you are dating somebody, your dating process must be surrendered to God. When it's surrendered to God, you do not move according to the desires of the flesh. Because you know that your flesh has been surrendered to the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. There's no need for you to be, to be compelled and to be convinced to give offering when your life has been surrendered to God. Hallelujah. When, when I was growing up back in the days, there would come a time because we, in, in, in the village right there, we would have a chief. We did not have a president. We would have a chief and also have a king. But in the village, there would, there would come a time when, when the old ladies will go to the fields and they will go and plow. When the time of harvest comes, there is no need for anything to happen. Before you eat the harvest, you take the 10% of the harvest to the chief's house. Uh, come on church hallelujah you know why you take it there and the chief does not come to convince you the chief does not come to to ask for it because you know i am subjected to the leadership of the king i am a man under authority the life that is surrendered hallelujah or oh, somebody shout and say my life is surrendered therefore you can't minister to god unless you surrender your life hallelujah when I hear the Lord tonight calling us to a place of surrendering, that we surrender our lives to God so that we can minister to Him. You see, when you minister to God without a surrendered life, 
you minister double-minded. I'm going to say that again. When you minister to God and your life is not surrendered, you minister to God, but you are double-minded. Number two, you minister to God without foundation. Number three, you minister to God, but you are not rooted. Why? Because you are not surrendered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, mama. I love using this example. Listen to me. I am the one in the front. Hello? I am the one with authority. I call her. She does not ask why you are calling me because she surrendered. She does not ask my age because she surrendered. She does not disobey because she surrendered. Hello, somebody? Now, come. My brother, just call her as well. Come. 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 Look. Look what surrender does. Surrender recognizes authority. Ah, somebody needs to give God a praise. Listen to me, child of God. Listen to me. You see, what am I trying to bring to you? When your life is surrendered, many voices will begin to call on you, but you don't answer to any voice because you know when you minister to. You know where you surrender to. You know where you submit to. You don't just submit to any voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we find this character from Paul and Barnabas and the other teachers and prophets. The Bible says they ministered to the Lord because their lives were surrendered to God. Can I ask you tonight, you're making moves, you're making waves, you are trending, but is your life surrendered to God? You are trending in the local church, everybody talks about the way you serve, but is your life surrendered to God? Hallelujah. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know church, let's just get into this. You see, many of us are Christians. And allow me to say many of us, because some of us are just church goers. We're not Christians. Many of us are Christians, but we are disobedient Christians. Let me bring you breaking news that you can still be a Christian, but live in disobedience. Can I say that again? You can still be a Christian, serve God, preach powerfully, sing powerfully, pray powerfully, but you're in disobedience. Go and ask Moses. God said, take your rod, point it to the rock. Moses takes the rod. What does he do? He hit the rock. Water comes out. He still leads the Israelites, but disobedient. Oh, ha hallelujah. Hallelujah. He still leads the Israelites. He is still the chief, but he's disobedient. Until he goes up to the mountain of the Lord. And God says, look there. Do you see that? That's Canaan. You will see it, but you won't get there. Uh, okay, can, can I bring something to you? He died, Moses. Hello? If you read Joshua chapter number one, God speaks to Joshua and says, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Now, let's ask, how did Moses die? He goes up to the mountain. He never comes back. Am I talking sense? Now, who took him? Oh, talk to me, church, if you read your Bible. Who killed Moses? Uh, <laughs> who killed Moses? The same God took him, never came back. He is still recorded. Listen to me. He is still recorded in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11, in the heroes of faith, but he was disobedient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Just because they lift up their hands and speak in tongues of men and angels does not mean that you need to copy their life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just because they are close to the pastor and they run around in the church, they look busy, does not mean that you need to follow their spirit. Because they can still run around, but in disobedience. But the Bible says, Paul and Barnabas ministered to the Lord. The benefits of ministering to the Lord you've got a relationship with the Holy Spirit. When you minister to God, you've got sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. When you minister to God, you are not double-minded because you know the voice. 
When you minister to the Lord, you are not taken by any spirit because you know his spirit. When you minister to the Lord, you've got a close relation, an intimate relationship, even when the enemy can disguise himself. But you know this is a counterfeit spirit because you've got a close relationship to the Lord, but you cannot have a close relationship without ministering to. A close, or write this thing down, a close relationship is birthed when you begin to minister to the owner of the Spirit. Let me say it this way. A close relationship with the Holy Spirit will only be birthed when you've got an intimate relationship with the owner of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit said, but the whole Spirit is this. Who is the Holy Spirit? It's the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, how do we want, oh my God, my God, thank you tonight. How do we want to have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit without ministering to the owner of the Holy Spirit? The church of old, they would worship without instruments, baby. And the Holy Spirit would come down. Sickness will be healed. There was no worship team, no pianist, but there was a ministration to the owner of the Holy. There was a relationship with the owner. You see, the church of today has got a relationship with one another, not with the owner of the church. Therefore, when you've got a relationship with one another, you are disconnected to his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Exodus 33, <laughs> Moses, Moses is speaking to God and say, God, how shall it be known that we have found grace and favor from you? No, we are going to Canaan. We can see the blessing, but it must be known that we have found. He says, he says I can speak to you face to face and you are hearing me, but if, I, if I'm speaking to you and I don't have a sign that I speak to you and I don't have a sign that I minister to you. I can't take a move because I must, the success of my move is dependent on me having a sign that I speak to you. I don't want people to ask me about it. I want people to see it in my lifestyle, see it in my speech, see it in my prayer, see it in my worship. And the Lord says, my presence shall go with you. My spirit shall go with you. My Holy Spirit shall move with you. And Moses said, if your presence is not going with me, therefore, I'm not going anywhere. What does Moses say? Moses will say, if it is not known that I've got a relationship with you, I'm not going to say it, but it must be known. How shall it be known? By, the, by your presence. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they minister to the Lord. After ministering to the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, you know why you've never heard the Holy Spirit speak? Check your ministering to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, many of us, we always want to excuse ministering to the Lord to being prayerful. It's not being prayerful. Because many of us go into, into prayer for selfish reasons. Not for ministering to God. You go into prayer, Father, bless me with that job. You are not ministering to God. You are using God. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we go into the mountain. We spend the whole night there. Father, you are going to make a way. Father, you're going to bless me. Father, I'm going to be different from the... They will know how great you are. It's selfish prayers. You're not ministering. You are requesting. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor to ask the neighbor. When last did you minister? And when last did you request? Ask your neighbor one more time to another neighbor. How many times do you minister? And how many times do you request? Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody has a cloth that I can use. Do you have a cloth there at the back that I can use? Yeah. Come and minister. Minister to me. Minister to me. Now watch. She's wiping my shoes. Hello? She's not asking me anything. Actually, I am benefiting 
from her presence. Somebody needs to hear this. I need somebody to hear that tonight. Hello? I don't, I don't know what else she's going to do, but just watch her. She's ministering. She's not saying anything to me, but I can feel her. You see? Listen to me. She's tired. She doesn't know what to do anymore. Because many a times we've got a revelation about requests. But no one is seeking a revelation about ministering to God. People have got so many words. I'm telling you, if we start a prophetic prayer here, a declaration prayer, people can pray for 10 hours. Declaring. Declaring. But when we minister to God, people have no words. In Matthew chapter 6, the disciple says to Jesus, teach us how to pray. Jesus says, when you pray, say, my Father, our Father who art in heaven, Amen. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. There's no request. We are just ministering to God. I'm not asking. I'm just ministering to God. I'm not telling God about my problems. I'm just here to minister to God. And say, God, you are worth. Minister. And many of the people, they are close to God. But they don't minister to God. Hallelujah, someone. Ask a neighbor to tell the neighbor, when last did you minister to God? Minister. When last did you minister to God? Now watch. When you minister to God, you can't minister to God without, I told you about surrendering, but you can't minister to God unless you humble yourself. Ministration to God will require humility out of you. Without humility, you can't minister to God. Let me tell you something, church. Therefore, you, the God that you cannot see, how can you minister to the God that you cannot see and still minister to the man that you see? Hello, somebody? Now watch, watch, watch. This person that is wiping my shoes, my after church will say, you like sugar coating yourself with the pasta? Ne? You're showing off. Who do you think you are? You always want to serve the pasta. Now I want to use this example because I want, it, I want this thing to, 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 to get into you. Who do you think you are? You think you're the only woman in the church? Get away from there. Same applies to when you begin to minister to God. When you begin to minister to God, people begin to challenge. Situations begin to challenge your people. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Do you think he only hears you? Why? Because you are not asking. You are ministering. Ah, you, come on, church. You are ministering to God. You are ministering to God. That is why, child of God, that's why Hophni and Phineas were the children of Eli, but they were never recognized by God. But Samuel was just a foreigner. But because even though he was a foreigner, he ministered to God. Even though he was an outsider, he ministered to God in the temple. He was recognized for the crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Let me tell you something. We're busy talking about fornication and what, what, what. No, we've got people in the church. They're not fornicating. They don't do adultery. They don't drink. They don't smoke. They don't do this and that and that and that. But they're not surrendered to God. Can I submit to you tonight? Your life must be surrendered to God. I say your life must be surrendered to God. I say your life must be surrendered to God. You need to give your life to God. You need to surrender. Total surrendered life to God. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Lift up your hand and say, my life is surrendered to God. There's a song. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. Oh, to He, my, I freely give. You see, it does not say we surrender because the issue of surrendering is an individual thing. You are waiting for the church to surrender. It's an individual thing to surrender. 
The Bible says they minister to God. I want to pause here tonight. We're making moves. Making things happen. We're showing up. Looking beautiful. Looking there and there. Blessing after blessing. But how is our life surrendered to God? I want to, I want to ask that question. Is your life surrendered to God? Is your life surrendered to God? Hallelujah. The Bible says, they minister to the Lord. Hello? Now watch. Number two and very important. The Bible says, and they fasted. They ministered and they fasted. The Bible says, and the Holy Spirit said. Holy Spirit said. What did he say? The Bible says, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul. Separate for me. Uh -uh. Separate to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which this must tell us, guys, that the Holy Spirit, when you are surrendered to God, the Holy Spirit seeks after you. When, when you are surrendered to God, the Holy Spirit is after your life. Now, if you lack ministration to God, you will not experience separation to the Holy Spirit. It's not me, it's the Bible. Because they were separated. The, I, mean, I mean, because they were ministering to God. The, the Holy Spirit comes and says, I'm looking for those that are separated. I'm looking for those that are ministering. I'm looking for those that are serving. I'm looking for those that have chosen and made a decision that I'd rather suffer affliction with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a moment. Those that are ministering to God, those are the kind of people that the Holy Spirit is looking for. The Holy Spirit is not looking for prayer warriors. The Holy Spirit is not looking for bishops and prophets. The Holy Spirit is looking for those that are ministering to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank you, God. The Lord said, I must tell you, when you minister to him, he becomes a priority in your life. Now, therefore, when you put God priority, the Holy Spirit makes you priority. The Holy Spirit makes you priority. The Holy Spirit does not answer to you. He is not moved by your emotions because he's not your father. He's the spirit of your father. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now the Holy Spirit said, separate to who? Uh, come and talk to me, church. To who? To me. He says, these guys must be separated to me. Because me and them have got a relationship. These guys have got a relationship with my father. Therefore, I need them to come to me. Hallelujah. 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 Romans chapter number 8, I think it's in verse number 18. The Bible says, For the Spirit of the Lord testifies to my spirit that I am a child of God. Now, it, it does not do anything. It testifies. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, the same, this same spirit that we're talking about, it is this same spirit that searches the deep things that of the heart of the Lord. The same spirit we're talking about. It is the same spirit that the Bible refers to, that it was upon Jesus, and it was the one that caused the resurrection of Jesus. This same spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says, it testifies to the spirit of the Lord. Now watch this. How does it testify? It goes and checks the heart of the Father. Whether the heart of the Father has got a relationship with you, and when it checks the heart of the Father, it checks your heart and brings a testimony. Amen. Now, when it speaks about relationship, well, I mean, when it speaks about separation, the Holy Spirit checks your ministry book, your ministry record to God. Therefore, it comes and separates you. It does not separate you when you've got no record of, 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 of ministering to God. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, now, separate to me, Paul, I mean, I mean, Barnabas and Saul. Hallelujah. Now, number, <laughs> number four. I'm just building my story and then we're going we're to close just now. The Bible says, for the work which I have called them. Amen. Now, when did you call them? When did you call them? Because we're not hearing anywhere where the Holy Spirit began to call them. When did you call them? No, look, read your Bible. When did, 
Holy Spirit, actually, when did you call them? Okay, let's not even speak about calling. Holy Spirit, when did you know about them? The Holy Spirit said, I knew about them. While they were busy ministering to my father, I was busy watching. While they were busy ministering, I was busy preparing the calling. While they were busy ministering, I was busy appointing them. While, uh, you see, when I came to separate, I do not separate without preparation of the work. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I'm loving this microphone. It makes me not to jump, eh? And it makes you guys to listen to me very well. Listen to me, child of God. He prepares the work first and comes to separate. He does not separate without a destination. He does not separate without a purpose. He does not separate without, without a vision. He prepares the vision, then he separates. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Can I encourage somebody tonight who is going through separation and the Lord is separating you alone and you feel alone. Let me tell you something. You, your eyes have not yet been opened, but God said, I must tell you, there's already a calling that God has positioned for you. That's why he will not reveal the calling until he separates you. That's why we read today, uh, when we read today, Ezekiel 37, the Bible says in verse number one, Ezekiel 37, now the spirit of the Lord took Ezekiel into the valley of dry bones. There was no conversation before he was taken. He was taken into the valley and the Bible says the spirit of the Lord took him back and forth in the bones right there he saw all the bones while he was in the bones it was him and God him alone and God and God says son of man can this dry bones leave up can the and, and Ezekiel answers and says Lord only you know and that's when in verse number four the Lord said prophesy to this dry bones I have called you to come into the dry bones I have separated you to come into the valley because I had already prepared a calling for you in the in the valley Hallelujah. He says, separate these guys for the work. Shake your neighbor as your neighbor. There's a work for you. Ah, oh, some of you are not talking. Tell your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. I'll come and tell your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. There's a work that the Holy Spirit is separating you for. Ah, oh, come and tell your neighbor as a neighbor. Stop asking questions and trust the Holy Spirit that he's got a work for you. Oh, come and tell your neighbor, neighbor, he's got to work for me. I'm not going to quit the way. I'm not going to give up along the way. No matter how much tough it gets, I'm going to continue moving because I know he's got to work for me. For the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, he who began a good work in me, I have not yet realized it, but I know there's a good work that was begun by the Holy Spirit. And when he's calling me and he's separating me, I will not ask questions. I will not be in disobedience because I know there's a work. That is calling me for. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of us, we want to kill ourselves along the way because we have no revelation of this. That he's just separating you for the work. Separating you for the work. Bible says, Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I. I wish you had, I wish you had the Bible. Eh? I would ask you to underline the word I. Because many of us, we always want to quantify confirmation of the calling by how many people agree with the calling. Hello, somebody. We always want to, 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 to receive confirmation of the move by how many people are clapping hands for the move. But here, here, listen to the Bible. The work was not called by we. There were no crowds confirming the work. There was a single man who was the Holy Spirit confirming the work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me submit to you tonight that may your work, may, your work must not be applauded outside without the confirmation on the inside. And how do you receive the confirmation on the inside? My brother cannot get into my inside. You cannot get into my inside, my dear. It is the Holy Spirit that confirms the work on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Una, let's just jump to Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. Or somebody can just read it for me. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. We'll, we'll come back here now. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. 
Let's read together. On the count of two. Let's go. One, two. Huh? According to what? According to the power that is that is working. Where is the power working? Where is the power working? Where is the power working? And scripture says, greater is he that is what? On the inside of us than he that is in the world. Now, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly according to the power that is working in us. Now watch this. This power that is, that is in you, it is not sitting. It's doing what? Ah, oh, come on church. The power is doing what? Tell the neighbors and neighbor, the power is working. Come and tell the neighbors and neighbor, the power is working. The power is working. Now, this power is in you. But watch, anything that the Bible talks about, now unto him who is able, his ability is in accordance with the working of the power that is in the inside of you. It is not in accordance with the power that is uploading you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something, church. Many a times when you are in the right path, you, do, you receive less applause. I'm going to say that again. Many a times, when you've caught it and you are moving correctly to your destination, you receive less applause. But human nature says, when I am doing right, I receive more applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. What example can I give? What example can I give? What example? God, give me an example tonight. Give me an example. Now, Mularo, if you, from today, up until Monday next week, you say, I'm going to be sleeping at the church and I'm going to be praying. Amen? And you are praying. You, do, you don't leave. You don't bath. You are praying. Sunday morning, you wake up, sweep the auditorium, prepare the church, and what not, and what not. And you're, let me tell you something that no one is going to speak about it. Am I right? I'm using my own. Now, become pregnant before you get married. Even before the pastor knows about it. Hello? She comes. Pafunzi, I need to talk to you. Something is concerning. My spirit is not right. I hear, when I look at Mugaro, I just feel, I feel, I, I tell you, that, that's how Christians gossip. When, when I look at Mugaro, I, I, I'm not subtle. Something is not right. Pafunz, we need to pray for her. Hello? Hallelujah? Hallelujah? What? Before you know it, my father comes, Mafunzi, we must restore order in the church. How can leaders do such a thing? No, we, we, we can't leave this thing hanging. Tell the church. Tell the church what she has done. So that the church must know as a church, we set the record straight. How do we set the record straight? Because of sin. But we don't set the record straight when she's dwelling in prayer. Why? Because when you are in the right path, people don't speak about it. Hello, somebody? Hello, somebody? I'll, I'll, I'll leave this church every Sunday. I'm a powerful preacher of it. I preach powerful every Sunday. Even now, I'm preaching powerful. No one says a word. Let something bad happen to me. Oh, my God, he was a powerful preacher. Where are we going to find such a preacher? The anointing, Mudinda. The anointing in you. I man, the devil is messing up with, with, with the precious stones of God. But they don't tell you when you're still on the path. Ah, you know what I'm talking about. You are laughing, but you're experiencing it right now. And you want to quit that way. Because those that you thought must support you are not supporting. Child! Be careful. Because you're jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. The power is working in you. You don't need to see it. You just need to believe that he's working in you. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Let's go back. Let's go back there. Let's go back there. 
Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And this power, it is the Spirit of God. Amen, hallelujah. It is the Spirit of God. The Bible says, separate to me. These two guys. For the work to which I have called them. Can I encourage somebody tonight? That God would never have allowed you to be created without having a calling and an objective for your creation. No one that is existing on earth right now that God does not have a purpose for. That God does not have a plan for. What does Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says? I know the plans that I have for who? For you. Hallelujah. I'll put your right hand on your chest and say, God knows the plans that he has for me. Come and speak it one more time and say, God knows the plans that he has for me. Even when doctors give you a report of cancer, even when doctors give you a report of this and that, listen to me, child of God, it does not change the plan of God about your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for the work to which I have called them. Now, now watch this, watch this. Do I have time? Yeah. I've got 10 minutes. Now, I want to show you something here. I want to show you something here. Go to um, chapter 13, verse number 45. Now, now, we have passed through the steps of their calling. They were ministering, they were serving God, blah, 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 blah. Everything was looking hunky-dory. The Holy Spirit confirmed their calling. After, if you read the scripture in, in, in verse 3 there at the back, the Bible says, after the Holy Spirit spoke, they continued fasting. And after they were fast, the hands were laid on them. After hands were laid, they were sent out. Which means this thing was valid, yeah? Which means this thing is going to go well. Hallelujah. There is, there is, the Bible says, having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them. Oh, come on. And they sent them away. Which means these people, their calling was quantified. It was qualified. Which means everything was going to be a smooth ride. Now jump to the other verse. Let's read together. Let's go. One, two. But when the Jews saw the multitudes. My God, God, God. Listen to me, child of God. When the Holy Spirit has ordained your calling, your calling will begin to attract multitudes. I need to break that down. Your calling will begin to attract multitudes. Some say multitudes. Some say multitudes. Now, watch here. Scripture does not say the calling. Well, the calling attracted Christians. Huh? It attracted who? Now, can we then agree, church, that when scripture speaks about multitudes, it, it spe it's speaking even about criticizers. It's speaking about your haters. It's speaking about people that never believed in you. It's speaking about people that pretend for you. They are part of the... Ah, uh, come on, church. They are part of the... These people are part of the multitudes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the Jew saw the multitudes. And they were filled envy. Oh, even I served God. I, I prayed and fasted. The Holy Spirit separated me. The Holy Spirit uh, confirmed my calling. But let me tell you something. Confirmation does not mean exemption. <laughs> I need to teach tonight. Confirmation does not mean exemption. Confirmation does not mean that you are exempted. Actually, confirmation means inclusion. <laughs> Hallelujah. These guys, they were anointed, they were prayed for, they were sent out, hands were laid, but the Bible says the Jews were filled with envy. Another word for envy is jealousy. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Let me submit to somebody tonight that it does not matter how much you pray, people are going to jealous you. When you begin to make a move into that which God has called, that's why they always want to talk you out of making a move. That's why they always send those texts because they want to discourage you from making a move. But let me tell you, the moment you shut the doors, the moment you shut away your eyes and your, I mean your ears and begin to make a move, the Jews will be filled with jealousy. Hallelujah. 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 But let me submit this thing to you. The Jews being filled with jealousy does not mean that you were not separated for the calling. 
Because here lies the problem. We stop making moves. We stop moving towards destiny because we want to convert the Jews to stop being jealous. No, it is part of the calling that there must be jealousy of you. It's part of the move. Tell your neighbor the neighbor. It is part of the calling. Oh, come on, tell your neighbor the neighbor. It is part of the calling. So when you are wasting time trying to convince them, you are delaying yourself. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Stop comparing yourself to them. Now watch this. You were called to make a move. They were called to be jealous on you. It's their ministry to be jealous on you. It's their ministry to oppose you. It's their ministry to stand against you. It's their ministry to, be, to, to, to not believe in you. Actually, child of God, it wouldn't be a calling if everybody was believing in it. Oh, man, even Jesus. In verse number 13, just before verse number 13, I'm using the New King James, New King James Version. It speaks about, now these guys, they are still at Antioch in Presidia. They are still in Antioch in Presidia. Hallelujah, somebody. That's verse, uh, verse number 13 of chapter 13. Now, while they were still there, now watch. In, in verse 42, before, before we start verse 42, it speaks about the blessing and conflict at Antioch. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Now watch, verse 42, the Bible says, So when the Jews went out from synagogue to synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to the next Sabbath. Hello, somebody? Verse number 44. And on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of the Lord. Verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, now watch, what a, this is the point that I want to drive off, that many a times the place of your blessing will not become the place of your reception. Where God anoints you, many a times God anoints you into a place where people are too familiar with you where people know too much about your history and they will not receive you. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to watch here. In verse number, verse number 45, the Bible says, they opposed the things spoken by Paul. Who was opposing? The Jews at Antioch. The same Jews that some, probably some of them were in the church while they were being separated. They rose up and opposed them. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. But I love scripture. The Bible says, when they were opposed, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas did what? Ah, oh, come on, church. Can you, don't you guys get excited by the Bible? Paul and Barnabas did what? They grew what? No, not cheese cob. They grew boldness. Hallelujah. They grew bolder in the midst of, uh, can I talk to somebody tonight, that in the midst of opposition, opposition must not make you turn back. Opposition must make you to grow in boldness. Opposition must make you to grow in confidence. Opposition must make you to grow in your determination. Hallelujah. Can we then agree as I close tonight that Paul and Barnabas will still have the calling, will still have the separation, but we lack the boldness in the absence of opposition. Ah, oh, somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen in this place. Somebody shout amen in this place. Tell your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. Come and tell your neighbor tonight as a neighbor. Your opposition is your promotion. Tell your neighbor as a neighbor. Your opposition is your qualification. Tell your neighbor as a neighbor. Your opposition. Is your place of growth. That's your opposition. Without opposition, there's no qualification. The Bible says, these guys, they grew in boldness. And this is my last point that I want to bring to somebody. I wrote these things down in the morning, and I'm going to read it again if somebody did not get it. At times, oppositions are there. I mean, at times, oppositions are what we need to show the greatness that has been deposited in us. Oppositions will always come as an obstacle when you stop moving. But they change to become a stepping stone when you continue moving.
Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody has a, has a lipstick, lip balm, lip balm. That I can use. I bet that you have a lipstick. Oh, thank you, thank you. No, 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 not these fancy ones, man. I want a lip balm, man. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one. Bring, bring, bring. Bring that one, bring that one. I want to use this as, a, as, a, as an example. Now watch this thing. You will never know the greatness of this thing. The greatness is not in the container. The greatness is in the content. Hallelujah. I've just opened it, but nothing is coming out. And you can throw it away. And you say, but I've opened my food. Nothing is coming out. What is needed is opposition. Somebody hear me tonight. Somebody hear me tonight. What is needed is opposition. And this is you, child. There's greatness in you. There's boldness in you. There's anything that you need that for you to, to get your destiny is deposited on the inside. But you will never know it until you're pressed. Until you're attacked. Until the enemy comes like a flood. You will never know that there's a standard waiting to be lifted up. How do you know the standard when there's an attack? Watch this. Hello, somebody? What, what is this? Is this hand lotion? Oh, oh, oh my God. I didn't know. Hey, Ngawe, you're dead. Now watch, watch, watch. It is easy for me not only to throw it away, but to pass it on. Hello? She's, she's, she's busy tossing herself, enjoying it, but it's not yours. It's mine. Oh, I've come to decree and declare. Somebody must go back and take away their gift. Somebody must go back and take away their power. Take away their anointing. And say, devil, you took it from me, but I did not have a revelation. Tonight I've got a revelation. I want it back. Or somebody shout and say, I want it back. I've just learned from her. I didn't know. If you want to see what's happening inside you, press it. It looks old. But let me tell you something. Hey, even those that are sitting at the back, they're saying, ah, oh, ah, oh, because no eye has seen, no ear has heard what the Lord has in store for you. It will shock even the Jews. It will shock everybody else. That, that thing is old, but there's too much power in it. That thing is young, but there's too much power in it. That thing has been down and out, but there's too much power in it. Why do you know the power? Because of opposition. Opposition. This, this thing, I don't know when it was bought, but you can see it's worn out. But listen to me, guys. Listen to me, I'm closing. Listen to me, guys. If all of, all of us here, our lips were dry, this thing will service us. And I want to talk to this thing that is seated here. You can service the world. Don't listen to what the world is saying about your container. Don't listen to what the world is saying about your surrounding. Don't listen to what the world is judging about you, your look. It's not about your looks. It's about what you're carrying on the inside. For we have this ethnic treasures. We have this vessel in us. We have this ethnic precious treasure that is hidden in us. And it's in you. But you will never know it until you are opposed. What am I saying tonight as I close? Don't run away from oppositions. Actually, tonight when you go home and pray, invite the oppositions. Because it's in the midst of the opposition that we know how powerful you are. It is when David arrived at the battle, my last point, when David arrived at the battle, he was just a boy with his captain winner. But when he hit the opposition, he became a mighty warrior who delivered Israel. You will never know his power and his mighty and his ability until Goliath showed up. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. What you need in your life is to see a Goliath. Don't withdraw because of the presence of Goliath. Walk towards Goliath and say, Goliath, keep on coming. Actually, I was waiting for you. 
because I'm about to change my level. I will not change my level until you come. How many of you drive an automatic car? Not even an automatic car. Drive a manual. You see, when you're driving a manual, you can still stay in gear number five. Oh, manual is a car, sorry. If you drive an automatic vehicle, now, if, you, if you're driving a manual, uh, uh, when you, you can be on gear number five uh, while you are cruising, uh, while you are cruising. Uh, but let me tell you, the moment you hit an opposition and you hit a hill, uh, those that are qualified drivers, uh, they don't continue with gear number five. Uh, they go change down. Uh, why? Because now I need much power. What is the much power? The much power was revealed because of the presence uh, of the opposition. The much power was released because of the presence of the attacker. The much power was released uh, because of what the enemy is doing uh, and people don't recognize you they say what kind of a woman are you but you can tell them I'm a woman under attack uh, therefore when I'm under attack uh, I release my wings uh, when I'm under attack uh, I release my power when I'm under attack uh, I cannot remain silent uh, I rise up and make a move uh, I rise up and fight uh, I rise up and take back uh, what the enemy has stolen uh, because I'm a man I'm a woman under attack Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, lift them hands to the Lord tonight. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Opposition after opposition. But the opposition is there to release the power. To the opposition is there to release the power. The Bible says, Paul and Barnabas, the good, the boldness. And I want to release tonight uh, that may God uh, give you the grace to grow the boldness. Uh, you are not running away from the attack. Uh, you are not running away. You are continuing making a move uh, in the midst of opposition. Uh, you, tend, you don't turn back. Uh, for the Bible says uh, we are not of those who turn back uh, to their own destruction. Uh, but we are of those uh, who continue making a move. Uh, and Paul says, uh, one thing that I do, uh, I forget what lies behind. Uh, and I press on to the mark of the high calling and I'm calling for somebody tonight in the midst of opposition press baby in the midst of opposition let there be boldness in the midst of opposition may God give you the strength in the midst of opposition may God give you the power may God give you the grace to continue moving up to continue moving up to continue moving up for we understand that we must enter the kingdom of God through many tribulations through many trials through many oppositions but one thing I know is that I'm going to enter the kingdom of God with the hands lifted up tonight I don't know how tired you are because of opposition after opposition I don't know how, how much you're about to give up opposition after opposition some of the opposition is coming from people that you never expected from things that you never expected from people that you hoped so much out of but God has sent me tonight to say, baby, in the midst of that opposition, may you grow the boldness. May you grow the boldness. I want you to, I want you to touch the neighbor on your left, on your right. Just touch them and pray for boldness tonight. And pray for boldness tonight. I feel upon my spirit. Pray for boldness tonight. If you're joining us from home, touch somebody tonight and pray for boldness tonight. Pray for boldness tonight. Touch yourself on the head and pray for boldness tonight. In the midst of opposition, you are under attack. You are being opposed at work up. You are being opposed in your health. Up. You are being opposed in your family. Up. But I pray for boldness. Up. You are rising in 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 boldness. Up. God has prepared the work. Up. The Holy Spirit up, has confirmed your calling. Up. The Holy Spirit up, has confirmed your destiny. Up. You will not quit along the way. Up. You will not give up along the way. Up. May you grow the boldness. Up. May you grow the stubborn faith. Up. May you grow up, and continue moving up because you are separated up, for that move. Up. You are separated for that calling. You are separated for that work. May God give you the boldness. May God give us the boldness. May God give us the boldness against opposition. We rise above the opposition. We rise above the attacks. We rise against those that don't believe in us. We rise against the challenges. For we grow the boldness. I pray tonight for the church that it shall grow in boldness. That it shall grow in boldness. That it shall grow in boldness. I pray for men and women under the sound of my voice. Grant them boldness in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May it be so that we make a bold move out of the boldness that was initiated and received in the midst of opposition in Jesus mighty and precious name. I pray tonight. May it be so for each one of us in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Amen and amen. 
Oh, come on, somebody give God a hand of praise tonight. Oh, God, we bless you, God. Oh, come on, somebody give God a hand of praise tonight. Oh, come on, somebody give God a hand of praise tonight. Come on, give God a hand of praise tonight. And thank God for the boldness. Thank God for the boldness. If you don't need it, thank God for your sister. That she's rising up. Your brother is rising up in boldness. Your brother is rising up in The church is rising up in boldness. The young people are rising up in boldness. There's boldness in the midst of opposition. In the midst of opposition. Hallelujah. I leave you with this word. That God gave me. That every separation I separate you from. I have already provided the boldness you need to move in the separation. All you need to do is say, God, give me the boldness. Hallelujah. It's not going to be an easy road. It's going to be tough. But when tough times come, tough people, they continue going. Because winners never quit. And quitters never win. But we are raising winners in the name of the Lord. We're going to win in the midst of COVID, in the midst of petrol hikes, in the midst of unemployment, in the midst of load shedding, in the midst of unholiness. In what We are raising up winners in the name of the Lord. Oh, come and lift up your hands and give God a hand of praise. Amen.